Welcome to the world of Pokemon, filled with many pocket-sized monsters that filled the land. Or, in not-so-pocket-sized ones, too. What's this thing? Some kind of rock serpent! Oh, would you look at that? There's a pocket-sized one right there! You can't forget about the child. The one wearing its mother's skull. It's some sort of mask. You know what? I've seen enough. I don't, I don't even think I like Pokemon anymore. I don't even know what those those things are. And, uh, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not sitting around just looking at that. Wait, wait a second. What is that? What was that? I need every single one of these that has ever existed and uh, ever will exist. I'm hooked! Nintendo, Miyamoto san, take it all! Take all my money! A shining Pokemon. Every Pokemon has a 1 in 8,091 chance of being a shiny Pokemon. A rare variant of Pokemon that is a different color and sparkles. That's it! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna be Pokemon only using shiny Pokemon. Hello? What do you mean I, sh I, sh I shouldn't do that? You don't, you don't think I can, huh? What's that? You say it's been done before. It's phony. Oh no, but not by me. <laughs> oh, you say- Wait, what? Come again? Wanna- wanna just run that back past me again real quick? Just a little? Seems like I've already done this before. What about the- what about the whole thing about me not knowing about what a shiny Pokemon is and whatnot then? How about a shiny hardcore Nuzlocke in a different game? Oh, I just play. Get ready to travel into the Pokemon adventure. So shiny and bright, you're gonna need to put your shades on. Just because you're wearing them doesn't mean you can't stare directly into the Pokemon's sun, okay? So, we could do this the easy way and just do a shiny only hardcore Nuzlocke on one of these ROM things that where the chances of catching a Pokemon is much higher and saved me hours of my life. But we're all gonna die one day, so might as well do a plain Pokemon. Pokemon on an actual Nintendo cartridge. Let's see you take your shiny ROM Pokemon out for a walk with your $50 Pokeball Plus that you transfer from your $400 Nintendo Switch in the $80 game. Wait a second, man. that's a lot of money. That might be why people emulate, huh? I'll be doing this shiny Nuzlocke in Pokemon Let's Go, Eevee for the Nintendo Switch. If you guys want to see this done in another Pokemon game, get this video to 5,000 likes, and the game with the most suggestions will be next. If you guys can do it, I don't think you guys can do it. The 90s, In true Pokemon fashion, we'll have to name our rival of this game. And since he's such a nice guy and always wants to give us stuff, while being just ever so slightly annoying for being too nice, because we, we don't want to stop giving us free stuff, it only makes sense to name this one Mr. Beast. But no amount of money will make you a better trainer than me, Mr. Beast. You remember that. Can I, can I get a few dollars though? You know, this is hard times, you know, this is being a 10 year old kid. The adventure begins. After leaving our house, we find the nutty professor. He's just talking to talking to birds. Yes, he's uh, he's never seen the horror movie of the same name, you know, with the killer birds. And we encounter the only reason this game is called Let's Go Eevee. Because, let's go! I've had enough of the plot! Oh yeah, and Eevee shows up. Uh, I guess, I guess that's also a part of it. We then go for our best Wii Tennis Swing and catch this thing only because we have no choice other than to catch it. <laughs> Let's be honest, this thing didn't f sparkle, all right? It's useless to me. What's it doing on my head? Somebody get that cat off my head. <laughs> After pressing A at a carpal tunnel speed, Professor Oak finally releases us from his text bubble prison and we're free to play the game. Well, sorta. We gotta go be his FedEx driver and delivery guy, actually. <laughs> And, uh, now we're free to play the game! Wait, what? You really want a piece of me, Mr. Beast? Okay, you know, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't see Chandler or Chris anywhere. They're, they're not gonna save you from these hands. Now the real challenge begins as it's time to spend hours and hours and hours and hours hours. It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Standing near grass, trying to catch Pokemon for them to appear very shiny and bright. Shine bright like a diamond! Shine bright like a diamond! Where the f are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services! It's time to stop! Okay, well, this isn't quite going as expected. So, by catching 31 of the same Pokemon without losing one along the way, we can increase our odds for the shiny Pokemon we want. Oh my god! There it is! It's Blue Boy! It's so... it's so... sparkly. It's beautiful, and uh, how long exactly did it take? Eight and a half hours. How's that for a nine to five job right there? <laughs> well, 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 including an unpaid lunch, obviously. But let's be honest, it was all worth it. Look at our blue boy here. 
And don't you get it confused, that's Squirtle, best starter. With this bad boy, we finally start the challenge and easily beat the first gym since this thing knows double kick. You need a grass or water Pokemon to enter in this version, I guess. Oh, <laughs> no problem. Good thing we, we chose the water starter himself. Hmm? Seems you, seems you don't have one. Has it all been a while? Well, that's fine. We'll just go catch a grass Pokemon and I know just the place. Viridian Forest. Home of Japan's Mickey Mouse and dense insect population. We're here for the dinosaurs. Wait, you don't believe me that they still exist? So yourself. There it is! Out of all the Pokemon that spawn here, we're able to come across the best Pokemon starter of all time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Bellsprout. Yep. Our total playtime also is up to 16 hours and we still haven't even battled the first gym yet. Save me. Yeah, but with Squirtle and Bowsbro, that shine man, no one stands a chance against me. Not even that Mr. Beast guy in his stacks of cash. Or a rock gym leader that, that's four times weak to grass. Just like that, all of our hard work paid off, and we beat the game. Beat the game? Yeah, but we don't have a badge to collect. Fuck. One badge and two shinies to our name. I think it's safe to rekindle our catch chain. Catching the Rising Sun Michael Mouse to train our small boys into much larger boys. War Turtle. Wow. This uses a lot more legs than I remember. Wait, we also have Weeping Bell. Yeah, that's my, that, that's, that's definitely my favorite right there. We're gonna let this thing evolve anymore because nope, no more growing up. I mean, if you just take one look at Victory Bell, you know exactly what I mean. He's not exactly saying no to drugs. With our new big boy in a plane, we can finally venture off into the cave where Team Rocket is searching for the rarest fossil. Kind of think of it. I wonder uh, what one they would choose if uh, I wasn't there to foil their plans. Yeah, you have any ideas? I heard it's good for the YouTube algorithm. With no time to waste, we take on the clowns of villainy. They are no match for the shine. <laughs> We get to answer that question. What fossil would we pick? We're on to the next gym. Misty. Oh wait, did I forget something? Oh yeah, Misty is a water type gym leader. Yeah, it's kind of strange. You got you got these ladies, you know, diving 30 feet from the air into the, into the shallow end. I mean, you risked your life for this. You didn't even really put up a fight. Misty isn't going down without a fight, however, because I realized quickly that not only am I gonna let one of my eight and a half hour shiny Pokemon fall ever because, uh, you know, they die and they die forever, they die, you know, as a Nuzlocke work. They also have a common weakness to Psychic, and Misty, well, sorta has one of the best and fastest Pokemon of that type. Of. And knowing that she's gonna open up with Psyduck, we lead with Weeping Bell. We go for Sleep Powder, but we miss on our first try and get hit with a super effective confusion. I go for a second sleeping power and land, leaving the Psyduck in deep sleep. Now we can set up Leech Seed in order to get some of our HP back while we continue to attack it with Vine Whip while it's asleep. We must have whipped it just a little bit too hard though because it wakes up after only two turns. It hits us hard yet again with a confusion. But after the Leech Seed drain and one more Vine Whip, Misty's first Pokemon goes down. And out next is the real threat, Starmie. One crit confusion could be easily the last thing that Weeping Bell ever sees. Luckily, it goes for Swift and we tank that hit pretty easily. So we hit it back with a very hard crit Vine Whip. And Starmie goes for yet another Swiftly, leaving us at only 9 HP so we can finish the job with another Whip of the Vine. Now that we have the second gym badge, it's time to go to the next town and have ourselves our third shiny. We also gotta talk to the, the, the pink war turtle guy first. Okay, we get it. You can stand on your back feet. whoop de doo Mine's blue. We change the man out of his first sono and find out he's actually the Pokemon Leonardo DiCaprio and invites us to the biggest boat to ever exist in the Pokemon world. Huh. You know, it sounds it sounds oddly familiar though. I don't I don't know if I trust it. On our way there, we encounter a shiny Pokemon that required no hunt whatsoever. A completely random shiny encounter. It's so, it's so, the same. At least it has the same eye color as me now. And also Super Saiyan Goku. Well, I mean, we're already halfway done catching Pokemon. Assume that no one dies, of course. We head over to the boat of our dreams in the number one box office movie opening of all time. And look who's here. Mr. Beast. Wow, no way. You're so rich. Gotta show it off, didn't you? And now you want a battle? All right, let's make this quick. I'm honestly not too sure about this unsinkable ship thing, you know, I mean, you calling itself unsinkable, you know, most likely it's gonna get sunk. So uh, let's hurry up and get this done so we can get off here quick. War Turtle, use dig. 
Okay, maybe that wasn't the best idea. Mr. Beast, you might want to get off the boat. I don't want to be the guy who uh, who killed Mr. Beast. How about we finish this and then I'll uh, I'll meet you up on the dock, buddy. Unless you did bring some, uh, you know, you need to bring some flex tape. While the ship is still sinking, we obtained the ability to cut randomly placed trees, obstacles that the developers placed in the game for some reason. And that's something that only they will know. And to get the hell off this boat! You know, see ya. Have a safe trip. There's clearly not a hole in the bottom of the boat. No, no. Bye. After picking through the garbage and doing his lawn care for him, it's time for Lieutenant Surge. War criminal, I mean, um, war hero, is up. And his electric types are no match for our underground attacks. Come on, Sergeant, gotta dig those trenches! You know, PTSD, gotta relive it! Don't just stand there and let your mice do the fighting! What do you think this is, Tom and Jerry? Surge! After the flawless way this challenge has been taking place, I really thought nothing could go wrong, so I entered the dark cave and I started our fourth shiny hunt. And after six hours and the best shiny hunting strats that you could ever imagine, <laughs> we encounter the worst ever possible shiny a graveler. And since it was only six hours, I was willing to give it another chance. There's so many better Pokemon to counter. So, I don't, I don't, I don't catch it. I don't know why I did this. This was a terrible mistake. Possibly one of the worst decisions of my life. Believe me, I spent like six more hours there after this. And, uh, anywhere. You know, I spent, I went there, I went there. Every goddamn way. All the places you could go. Anywhere I could possibly go before we battled Erica. Vulpix? Nothing. Rapidash? Nothing. Oh yeah, except there's a pea-colored bird that flew into me and ran into me so fast I didn't even capture it up on the screen. So I got it. Since this was the Pokemon I actually chained to, to start this whole thing, he didn't even break the chain, so I returned back to the cave. And I thought, might as well catch our second last Pokemon before we battle Koga. Considering, to get into Koga's gym, you're gonna need to catch 50 Pokemon regardless, and I don't want to break my chain just for some regular Pokemon. <laughs> I go back to the cave where it all started, and there he is. Shiny Machop! The Holy One! The one and only! Destined to be Shrek! And now that we have five shiny Pokemon and just a little bit more than 35 hours spent down the drain, it's time to evolve Sparrow and take down Erica. Some of these trainers have some very strange words to exchange. You have two gray what? What are you gonna do next? Teach the kids how to gamble? Now with Fero on our side. Wait, hold on. This doesn't this doesn't seem right. Let's uh let's get let's get the chosen one first. Shrek! That's my boy, Shrek. That's him right there. That Shrek guy used to dream at work. He's got a little bit of Donkey's face, but uh, he'll do. We also got Blastoise and Clefable. Since they evolved by just, uh, you know, giving them rocks. You know, you say no to drugs, kids. I had to look the other way for this instance. It's time for Erica. Erica opens up with a Spaghetti Monster Tangela, leaving us to go into Firo. After a few air slashes, we take out the Olive Garden. Making her go into her Vile Plume, we go into Blastoise. She's unable to hit us underground while we're digging. It isn't enough to take Vile Plume out on our first try. We get Mega Sucked by our Mega Drain, but doesn't get enough HP to make it safe from a dig, so we uproot that weed. Next up is Weeping Bell, huh? Yeah, that's not, that's not the same thing, you know? They, they don't, uh, one of these things is not like the other. Oh, that's Weeping Bell, not Weeping Bell. Sorry, it's a different spelling, never mind, makes sense. Pharaoh has no problem air slashing this thing a few times until its demise, and we are left with only 9 HP yet again, and we claim the victory over Miss Victory Bell. Four badges, five shinies. That only leaves one thing left to do. Catch 50 non-shiny Pokemon in order to get inside the gym. Oh, and I also got a very strong guy to carry me around. My dreams have finally came true. I've always wanted to be swept off my feet by a large green monster with four arms. It's all over now. Ladies, you just have to trade your man away for him to come back with more arms on his back. <laughs> it's that simple. I did something you, you may not really like. I'm so wee. Please don't go. I use everyone's favorite Pokemon game, Pokemon Go. It's like, let me explain. It was just to attain a Pokemon so rare, so valuable. It is also a mythical Pokemon for this game. I'm talking about Melton. I mean, this ditto thing that's got stuck in a giant nut. Basically, you can only catch this Pokemon from, from connecting the Pokemon Let's Go and Go together and transferring Pokemon to obtain a metal box that gives you microtransaction skin for your Pokemon. Okay, not, 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 not that. No, it's just a Pokemon for one hour. And guess what? I had to do this four times in four full hours. Actual cooldown times in between where I had to wait days in between to do this. So uh, if you don't, if you don't want to look at this as a regular, a, re a regular shiny hunt, 
Shame on you, man. Shame on you. That can only evolve in Pokemon Go. So I evolved it and traded over to Let's Go. And come on, look at it. It's everything the Hulk is, but gooey with giant nuts. He's got it all. And I'm gonna keep it 100 with you right now, champ. I only use this Pokemon maybe three times for the rest of the entire run. And because of how low level it was compared to the rest of the team, well, let's just say at one point in this playthrough, it got melted. So if you dislike that I did this, it didn't really work out, okay? That's what you get for this big metal hunk of nuts. So whoever guesses closest in the comments wins a cookie. Go nuts. Anyways, time to battle Kakashi in his Shadow Clone bullshit. It's time to Jutsu, the copy ninja, who opens up with Weezing, so we go into Blastoise. And since Poison type is weak to ground typing, we go for Dig, which does about 70%. So that's not gonna save us from kicking a crit sludge bomb to the face. <laughs> Got that a sludge bomb? <laughs> yeah, I learned to be more toxic, Koga. We go to seal the deal with the second Dig, but Koga decides he's gonna do it on his own and goes for Explosion while we're underground. So, you know, we're safe. You don't kill me, I kill me! And since we're already underground, the next Pokemon that comes in, Venomoth, gets hit by Dig. Next turn, it does seem to outspeed us and hits us with a detrimental Psychic. And on top of that, our Ice Beam just isn't quite enough to seal the deal. So, we go into Pharaoh, who takes a Psychic and is just able enough to outspeed on next turn to take out the Moth with some Moth Balls. Next up is this Creamy Muck, and we go into Blastoise, hoping that Dig will be enough for it to kill. It's just pixels from killing Muck in one one hit, meaning we gotta survive this move. Or it could be the end of Blastoise. But he dodges with friendship. <laughs> Man, that's love. Meaning we can clean up the muck with a final Thunderbolt. Leaving the last matchup of the battle, Melmetal, the Copper Hulk, versus Golbat. Golbat just keeps going for Fly, so we can't hit it in between turns until it finally lands after hitting us with Fly. And we hit it with Thunderbolt, doing only slightly more than we're taking damage. This exchange continues until it takes us down to 13 HP, and we're finally able to take the bat out with the thunder that we harness from a static nut. And with the ninja defeated, I think it's time that we beat the mafia. You know, we, we've already done this before. And I just really didn't want to mention it, to be honest, because there's just one twister ride, and then we beat up criminals. And I'm only 10 years old. Where are the adults at? But anyways, the next gym should be Sabrina. But I decided to clear out the Team Rocket hideout within her hometown because they're a local Mafia man in my area. Closest 5k to me! Mr. Beast is here to say he wants to beat the Mafia as well. His idea is to put them in a giant circle and the winner gets a million dollars. And they periodically win cars if they go out. I mean, it's, it's not a terrible idea, but <laughs> come on. Could be worse. Like, uh, like being the former Pokemon champ, leaving a child, and well, Mr. Beast, the circle guy, to defeat the Mafia. Mafia, just because I beat up two of his Pokemon. <laughs> you know, we're still talking about the Mafia. So, uh, why wouldn't you? I, I, don't, I don't know. Deal with it? Because you're a dog and what's that? You, don't look at me. I just stand in the grass for like 40 hours and wait for the shiny things. Blue. What kind of name is that anyways? I bet your shiny would be much cooler and probably red. Anyways, we beat the Pokemon Mafia and surf to the next gym leader because, well, <laughs> a lot of our Pokemon would get Vine Whip very hard by Psychic and it's better to get a little bit stronger by taking a higher education with Skillshare, an easy manageable way to learn a Psych. <laughs> That. I can't read! We go on to take this mentally insane gym leader who turned his gym into the set of The Price is Right and eventually lead to battling him at the end so you can, uh, you want to be the host and the contestant, huh? What? It's time to take down Mr. Jeopardy himself now. Time for you, Blaine! And since we don't have a water Pokemon as of yet, we start off with Blastoise because, you know, we were told in the first gym he's not wise. Type. Dig is enough to one-hit both Magmar and even Rapidash thanks to a crit. Two hit his Arcanine, leaving his final Pokemon Ninetales. And I wish I had one of these shiny. Searched so long, but in the end, just didn't really matter. Think of the naming possibilities for this mystic fox. What do you guys think we should have named this thing if we got it? Oh well. At the end of the day, it's just as frail as his first two Pokemon and goes down with just a single hit of dig. Extinguishing Blaine's flame. Simply by throwing some dirt in his eyes. Toby Maguire would be pretty proud. I did this for you, Spidey. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. With Blaine out of the way, Mr. Beast assumes I played by the rules and I have seven badges. He's gonna go to the eighth, blah, 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 blah. Here's a circle. Just stand in it right now and give me a Tesla Pokemon. My man Shrek is gonna carry that for me. We head back over to Sabrina's, beat the fighting gym, so that we can pick Hitmonchan over Hitmonlee because Hitmonchan is based off Chaggy Chan and Rush Hour is far, <laughs> is a far better movie than anything Hitmonlee has made. At the end of the day, it doesn't seem to shine, so we're off to fight Sabrina. She has a mean pad here. These things ain't nice. 
nuts. They just keep sending me to different rooftops. So many rooftops, I was expecting to see Batman in the final one, not Sabrina. And and not a crowd of, of all things. Like, what, what is the crowd doing here? It's time for the most scary gym to this run, over half of our team being weak to Psychic. Fortunately, Blastoise is a perfect to take down Mr. Mine, however, thanks to its new poison weakness, now that it is a fairy. That clown's a fairy. <laughs> Leaving the next face-off of Shrek versus Slowbro. But since it's slow, bro, we outspeed and can do more than half with a Thunder Punch and survive so that we can follow up with the second Thunder Punch on the next turn, finishing, bro. Slow. We go into Blastoise, where one fire punch is enough to seal Sabrina's Jinx's fate, leaving only Alakazam, the scariest foe. So we go into Clefable and hoping to shadow ball this thing out cold. But one psychic is just too much and does a clean 80% off Clefable here, and we are outsped and outdamaged as Shadow Ball doesn't nearly hit as hard as I thought it would, leaving me to switch out to reserve Clefable's life, and only Firo, I suspect, can outspeed and survive a psychic, which it barely does even with it not being super effective. And we outspeed and fly, crushes the Spoonbender. Guess you didn't see that, huh? What kind of psychic are you? Now that we beat a psychic, we can do anything our money sets our mind on. That's a quote from Mr. Beast to live by. Speaking of Mr. Beast, we go to see him at the final gym, and he says, no matter how much money he throws at the locked door, it won't open. And he even offered to bury himself alive, if, if that's what it would take. That's something I can get behind, but uh, I don't think it would do anything. We end up going to the old man who knows everything, and his grandson's there. He even said that line that everyone loves. This is my grandson. What's his name again? Ah, uh, that Professor Oak. You better open the f***ing door to the gym, Professor Oak. The final gym battle is the ground type gym leader. Whoa, so innovative. We even got those pads that resemble the Team Rocket ones and oh my god, it all makes sense. The Mafia Godfather boss himself, Giovanni. Hey man, I get it. You're the bad guy. Can we just wrap this up? Mr. Beast is my friend. My life will be very empty very soon, as he'll be giving away islands, houses, and even buying out entire stores. And all I will be is a husk of a man until my friend, Mr. Beast, one day lets me hit the upload button for being a good boy. And I also want to become the champion before him before that happens, so let's go! It's time for the final gym battle. Giovanni, the mob boss himself, who goes into the face of corruption. That's right, Doug Trio. All three faces of corruption, actually. That's a three-faced mole right there. But no mole is a match for Shrek. Even though Dugdrio is extremely fast and Earthquake hits really hard, we survive so that we can ice punch all three of those faces back into the ground like whack-a-mole. Next up is a Blastoise Queen, but we keep in Shrek, hoping that we can outspeed and just survive one move as Ice Punch does more than 50% and we barely survive yet another Earthquake, giving us a chance to send this dinosaur back to the Ice Age. Where the dinosaurs were already, were already dead at this point. And yeah, on the timeline, yeah. Should check that one out. Speaking of dinosaurs, Giovanni uses his own pink Blastoise, so we go into ours. And even though his is three levels stronger than our Blastoise, ours actually has a water move in the form of Surf. And it's and, it, and it's blue. So, you know, yeah, we got that going for us. So we can rise above with the damage and wash out that bootleg Blastoise, leaving just his Rhydon. And it's no match for a single Mega Suck Drain from our Weeping Bell, putting the Mafia Man into early retirement. Well, all eight badges are completed. The only thing standing between my odd colored shaped monsters and me from being champion is the Elite Four and Mr. Beast. <laughs> Again. So we beat Mr. Beast yet again, and do the Zelda puzzles in the Victory Road, finally making it to the Elite Four. Lorelei, the Ice Master. Luckily, we're well equipped for this member as we have Shrek and his newfound superpower, so we can one-shot her Dugong at the cost of our attack and defense dropping. So we are forced to switch into Blastoise next turn, who fire punches her Justin Trudeau's Jinx right in the face. Out next, just to get knocked back down again, is Cloyster, who's no match for Shrek's superpower. But you know who is a good match for Shrek with his attack and defense being dropped is Slowbro, who withstands a Thunder Punch, although being paralyzed from the waist down. Wait, that's, that's not how it works? That's not how it works in Pokemon? It's up to Clefable to take out Slowbro, and because of its paralysis that's, that decides to take effect, you know, this turn, we don't take any damage as we're switched in, and we barely scrape by with Shadow Ball, only leaving Lapras. Her toughest and bulkiest Pokemon. Well, yeah, it, it's it. Shrek, superpower. Sorry, Ice Lady. 
It's time for Bruno, the guy who slams in a cross-legged form on battle and lives in a sauna. No rock serpent will ever prosper against Weeping Bell. We learned that all the way back in Gym 1. We Mega Drain that thing back to its ball. And next up is Bruno's Chucky Chan, who surprisingly survives a fly, leading us to get hit by a Thunder Punch. Air Slash is enough to take it out next turn. And next up is Bruno's Bruce Lee, who isn't as strong as Chucky. In one fly is enough to take out that thumb with legs. Leading to the best battle of all time, Shrek versus not Shrek, man. We have the level advantage for once. We go first, and superpower hits for 80%, meaning that we'll expect a mean punch back now that our defense is dropped. Or or four, I guess. He's got to use four hands to punch us with. Psych! It misses. It misses its superpower, thanks to our strong bond that we share in anime and whatnot. I don't fucking know. So bye-bye, Hitmonchamp and not Shrek. Last up is his Polyrath, who is a worthy opponent for Weeping Bell. Weeping Bell just slightly edges the Toad with gloves with that mega-sucking drain. Next up is, is Agatha, the old hag, who has some choice words for Professor Oak. And he may be a goofy man, but no one talks bad about that old man but me! We just beat our entire team with Blastoise alone, just because of those comments. Earthquake, after Earthquake, after Ice Punch. <laughs> Look at that, the bat froze in midair. After Earthquake, after Earthquake. Well, I guess that will teach you to ever speak on the Professor, old lady. Leaving only the final Elite Four member. Super Anime Red Hair Batman Dragon Trainer Lance. Regardless of him only having one dragon, you know, what kind of logic is that? Off that logic, I'm fucking Bird Keeper Beats! So we go with Mel Metal, being only the second time we're ever using this thing. And well, last. Unfortunately, we lost our shiny nut, turning into a puddle of metallic slime. Shrek comes out to avenge his buff brother with a single thunder punch, proving size doesn't mean everything. Yep, comes down to your arm quantity. Head to head battle with Aerodactyl versus Blastoise, the battle of the dinosaurs. Aerodactyl and Blastoise exchange blows, and it seems Aerodactyl would come out the victor if we would leave Blastoise in, so we switch to Clefable, who unfortunately reaches its untimely demise because of this, thanks to the hands of Hyper Beam. Oh well. <laughs> Never liked that thing anyways, and I'll, I'll get over it. The only good thing about this is it now has to recharge because it used Hyper Beam, so we're free to take this thing out with no threat at all. Right after this, somehow, Shrek outspeeds the Rock Serpent of Water and Skies and lands four times super effective Thunder Punch to its wide open jaw, hook line, and sunk, leaving him down to his last two remaining Pokemon, and Charizard is out next. We stay in with Shrek in hopes of getting a freeze, and you know, only being a 10% chance, but I've had worse odds against me, you know, 1 in 8,092. But it was at the cost of sustaining some critical damage from a singular air slash as we don't get the freeze, forcing us to switch into Firo, who not only outspeeds and hits Charizard with a fly, but also dodges a detrimental hyper beam so that we can knock it out the flying lizard with some of its own medicine and another air slash, leaving only Lance's partner and strongest Pokemon versus our starter partner, oh sorry, our real shiny starter partner, Blastoise, who not only outspeeds, but also outmatches the dragon in every single way with a single ice punch, revealing Lance is not the final opponent after all, and our true final boss is... not... Professor Oak. Unfortunately, it's Mr. Moneybags himself and our soon-to-be boss. Once this is all said and done, as a requirement as all friends of Mr. Beast. When we approach him, he says some sentimental bullshit about us sticking together until the end and we face off against our final opponent, champion Mr. Beast, the king of views, revenue, and now Pokemon. And it's time to knock off one of those titles from him today. He opens up with his No Sparkle Firo, so we go into Blastoise, but this Firo is of the Mega Evolution variety, and it is much more devastating of a bird. It doesn't even have to flap its own wings, it just glides forever. Power up or not, we dodge his first move and return the heat back with an Ice Punch, doing some great damage. Next turn he outspeeds us and lands an Air Slash, but since he didn't get the flinch, we're able to freeze the Turducken, Mega Bird with an Ice Punch. With five of his Pokemon left, we go into our own Firo, and although we can't Mega Evolve, we are able to flinch his Vile Plume with an Air Slash and do a lot of, lot of damage in one hit, resulting him into switching into Raichu, who walks into an Air Slash right into his face. Knowing it is going to go for an electric move to try to take out Firo, I pivot into our Blastoise that is not only affected by Thunder, but can also shake the tectonic plates with Earthquake, killing the rat. So we go back into Firo versus Vile Plume, and we exchange hits until Air Slash trims the plant down to size. Next up, is Charlie the Unicorn versus Shrek. A fairy tale 
Shadow Battle hits us with Flare Blitz, doing just 10 HP shy of half, and even with Recoil and a strong Earthquake, he survives another turn. Risking that he won't hit us with a crit next turn, we run it back with the exact same exchange and barely live the tale of Charlie the Unicorn. Leaving slow, bro versus Weeping Bell. A bad matchup for both players. As I go for Mega Drain, I take massive damage from Psychic that leaves us to only 1 HP, and that's only because he didn't want us to cry and toughed it out. You did that? Even though I didn't evolve you into your full Mega potential? You still cared enough to, well, live? <laughs> Alright buddy, get back in there and suck that bro dry. Leaving it to the final, final, final battle. The final countdown! A Blastoise versus Marowak! Okay, this was a very dumb matchup for me. And uh, I didn't think this one through. And uh, we lost. The only Pokemon that's been there since the start. That shine, damn it. Not you. Can't believe I'd do such a thing. I'll never be so careless ever again. I promise you, Blastoise. I go into our second longest companion, Weeping Bell, who finishes the journey once and for all with the final Mega Drain. And Mr. Beast is no longer Mr. Best. <laughs> we did it. With pure force and natural selection of only the best looking Pokemon, we discriminatedly picked because they sparkled. Some of them were blue. Making it possible for us to be YouTube millionaire Mr. Beast. If only we could get the real Mr. Beast to watch this video. But anyways, that's just a playthrough, a shiny Nuzlocke playthrough. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of this video. This video was made only possible because of you guys. I would not have powered through yet another playthrough of Shiny Only if it wasn't for your overwhelming continued support for the last Shiny Only playthrough that stands at 1.8 million views. Oh my gosh. My goal is to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If you enjoyed, feel free to hit the like and subscribe. And as always, check out the best video on the internet, Clock Clock Tower, or other Pokemon Challenge videos above. As always, I've been R9, and I hope you had yourselves a damn good time.